Keith, you have come here freely and without reservation to take Therese here present to be your wife according to the mind of the church? I have. Therese, have you come here freely and without, without reservation to take it here present to be your husband according to the mind of the church? enter to the house of the Lord. Blessed is our God, always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For peace, for high, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in the whole world, for the well-being of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy church and for all who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our Holy Father Francis Poporom, for our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God loving Bishop Milan, for the venerable priesthood, the diacon in Christ, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our civil authorities and all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the servants of God, give them trees, who are now to be joined in the common life of marriage, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. And that this marriage may be blessed, as was the marriage in Cana of Galilee, let us pray to the Lord. And that a chaste life and devoted children may be granted to them. Oh, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That they may rejoice at the sight of their sons and daughters. Oh, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
that they may be rewarded with good children and a life is about reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That they and we be granted the petitions that are helpful to our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That they and we be delivered from all affliction, rise and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Protect God, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remember, most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Mother of God, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, last coming our souls and one another, and our whole life. To Christ our God. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is your glory, honor, worship, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O most pure author of all creation, you in your love for mankind, Transform the rib of our forefather Adam into a woman and bless them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Through marriage you made them two in one flesh. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Those whom God has joined together let no man put asunder. In your loving kindness, you bless your servant Abraham and granting fruitfulness to Sarah, you made him the father of multitude of nations. You gave Isaac to Rebekah and blessed them with children. You joined Jacob and Rachel, raising from that union the twelve patriarchs. You united Joseph to Asenab and blessed them with children Ephraim and Manasseh, and accepting the prayer of Zachary and Elizabeth, you revealed in their child the forerunner John the Baptist. You caused the ever Virgin Mary to bosom forth in the order of nature from the root of Jesse, and you yourself became incarnate of her and were born of her for the salvation of the human race. In your graciousness and great goodness, you came to Cana in Galilee and blessed the marriage which took place there. Thus you made it clear that it is your will that there should be lawful marriage and from it procreation of children. Now, most Holy Master, hear the supplication of us, your servants. As you were there, so also be here with your invisible presence and bless this marriage. Grant to your servant, Keith and Therese, a peaceful and long life, matrimonial chastity, mutual love in the bound of peace, and long-lived posterity, happiness in their children, and the unfading crown of glory. Keep their married life above reproach and grant them to see their children's children. Give them dew from heaven and the fruitfulness of the earth. Provide them with an abundance of temporal good things and that they in turn may share their abundance with those in need and grant to everyone here present with them all that is necessary for salvation. For you are merciful, generous God, and you love mankind, and we give glory to you together with your eternal Father and your all-holy grace, like giving spirit 
now and ever, and forever. Amen. Oh, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Oh, holy God, you formed man out of the dust of the earth. You fashioned a woman from his rib and joined her to him as a helpmate. For it pleased your great generosity that man should not be alone upon earth. Now, O Master, stretch forth your hand from your holy dwelling place and join this your servant Keith and Therese, for you alone joined his deaf wife to her husband. Unite them in one mind and flesh, granting them fruitfulness and rewarding them with good children. For yours is the might, and yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. These rings are blessed in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The servant of God, Keith, is a pause to the servant of God, Therese, in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The servant of God, Therese, is spouse to the servant of God, Keith, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Servant of God is crowned in marriage. For the servant of God she is in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the servant of God she is, is crowned in marriage. For the servant of God, Keith, in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll fix it. O Lord, our God, crown them with glory and honor. Wisdom. Um, You have given them a blessing forever and have made them glad with the joy of your presence. from the epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, give thanks to God the Father always and for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Defer to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be submissive to their husbands as if to the Lord, because the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of his body, the church, as well as its Savior. 
As the church submits to Christ, so wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. He gave himself up for her to make her holy, purifying her in the bath of water by the power of the word, to present himself a glorious church, holy and immaculate, without stain or wrinkle or anything of that sort. Husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Observe that no one ever hates his own flesh. No, he nourishes it and takes care of it as Christ cares for the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cling to his wife, and the two shall be made into one. This is a great foreshadowing. I mean that it refers to Christ and the church. In any case, each one should love his wife as he loves himself, the wife for her part showing respect for her husband. Peace be to your reader, wisdom be attentive. You, O Lord, will keep us and preserve us forever and ever from this generation. And listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Let us be attentive. At that time, there was a wedding feast at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had likewise been invited to the celebration. At a certain point, the wine ran out, and Jesus' mother told him, they have no more wine. Jesus replied, Woman, how does this concern of yours involve me? My hour has not yet come. His mother instructed those waiting on table, Do whatever he tells you. As prescribed for Jewish ceremonial washings, there, there were at hand six stone water jars, each one holding fifteen to twenty-five gallons. Fill those jars with water, Jesus ordered, at which they filled them to the brim. Now, he said, draw some out and take it to the waiter in charge. They did as he instructed them. 
The waiter in charge tasted the water made wine, without knowing where it had come from. Only the waiters knew, since they had drawn the water. Then the waiter in charge called the groom over and remarked to him, People usually serve the choice wine first. Then when the guests have been drinking a while, a lesser vintage, what you have done is keep the choice wine until now. Jesus performed this first of his signs at Cain of Galilee. Thus did he reveal his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Glory to Jesus Christ. Congratulations, Chris. Fix your crown. Good. Sometimes it, it is difficult to keep even the best things in straight. It takes effort. Yes. And marriage takes a force too. Today is a great day for you. But allow me to start somewhere in the beginning. In Psalms, we read that God knew us before stars were created, that each of us was in God's mind before space, earth, and we came to existence. Be in God's mind, it means to be loved, to be with Him, to have fullness of being. So he called you to life in right time. And his plan for your life is to come to salvation. It means to come to heaven, to be with him in this deep relationship we cannot imagine now. And we call it heaven. As a good father, he arranged everything for us, for each of us. He gave to our way of life, people, different impulses, different suggestions, which if we take would be for us guides and is our journey to heaven. But there is one special moment and God elevated this special moment to thing, to mystery we call marriage. In this special moment you join your lives together and you obtain God's grace, this invisible power from heaven, this invisible energy, I would say, for you. May you are able to help each other on this journey to this heavenly home. And we celebrate this moment with you today. We celebrate this your decision to follow this God's plan with your lives. We are 
full of joy that you decided to accept this journey for the rest of your life, that you spend this journey together, helping each other, supporting each other, up to the moment when you reach heaven. And this is why we put crowns on your head. Crowns which mean, mean the meaning of these crowns is double. At first it is symbol of this honorable state which was given to you by God's grace. That God changed in this moment your soul with his grace, which is now his grace, which is beautiful, honorable, and has so huge value that these crowns are really only very simple symbol of this beauty, of this honor he gave you through this sacrament. So you should remember weight of this crown as a sign of God's love, as a sign that he takes care of you and he is promising help for you. But this crown reminds, should remind you even this crown of thorns which Christ had when he was on the cross which was painful. And this crown reminds you that while even uh, this day is so beautiful, there will be days in future which will be filled with suffering. When you will be move or when you will need to deny yourself if you want to love the other. When you will need to really take cross if you want to stay in love. When these days come, remember this crown. And remember that even through this pain, God, call, God calls you to grow. And true is that true love and especially marriage love is filled with pain. Because to love, it means to suffer. But it is suffering which has meaning. It is suffering which transforms us and changes us and makes us holy. I would like to remind you a few signs of love we are talking about. That love means to love as a first. Not to wait for a moment when my partner is ready to serve me or to show me the love. Actually, we, would, it's, we should not expect that. We should love as a first and even not expect to love to be loved from as a reward isn't it painful many times another sign of love is to be ready to die for each other it should be practice connected with your morning prayers, in the end you add request to God, O oh Lord, give me strength if there is a need to die for my husband, to die for my wife. To be ready each morning to love each other so much that you would give up your own life. 
When you start your day with this decision to love each other this way, all those troubles, difficulties of life will be nothing if you are ready to die. And third sign of, of true love is to see Christ in the other. That is loving your wife, loving your husband. In the time when it is not worthy of love, but you love it because of you see Christ in the soul of the partner. This helps you, even with through pain, to overcome this temptation to be angry, to be sad, to be upset. And only those few signs shows how many times these crowns of glory are changed to crowns of thorns, which are painful. But remember, this is process of maturing. You came here and you told God, we want to spend life together to the end. And we want it to spend as your servants. Because you loved us before stars were created. And you want us back to our home in heaven. When I was seminarian, our spiritual father, really very old priest, he said several times, he said, you know, you will have a parish full of saints. And we were like thinking, what he is talking about? And he said, look, your parish, the pew, Look at all of these couples there who are coming to Christ, who are coming to the church, begging each Sunday and many times, many times during the week for help from above. May they are able to live together. May they are able to love each other. May they are able to raise well their children. Those people are going through many trials, but they stay together and they support each other. And he added, can you imagine that there would be other way, to, easy way to sainthood than this is? Well, some could dispute, discuss this, his statement. But he was right. Marriage life lived in correct way with God transforms you and makes you really holy, ready for heaven. So, Keep this feeling of the weight of these crowns in your memory for all life. When you are always encouraged by glory God gave you through this grace of marriage. And may it is a reminder that these darker days which will come are days through which you can be just more transformed for more perfect mutual love. Give God's grace. Keep love towards God. And your mutual love will grow without stopping. Amen. <laughs>
let us all say with our soul and with our mind, let us say. Almighty God of our fathers, we pray you here and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you here and have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for the health and salvation of the servants of God, Keith and Chiris, now united in common life of marriage. Again, let us pray for the people who are present in this holy church who have made your great abundant mercy for all our brethren and all Christians of the true faith and for their health and salvation. Um, Merciful God, who loves mankind, and we glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Oh, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, our God, according to your saving providence, you came to Cana in Galilee. And by your presence you manifested that marriage is an honorable state. Keep in peace and in oneness of mind these your servants, keys and trees, whom it please you to unite, show their marriage to be honorable, keep them without, keep them faithful to each other, grant their marital life to be without sin and enable them to attain a ripe old age, observing your commandments with a pure heart. For you are our God, the God of mercy and salvation, and we give glory to you, together with your eternal Father, and your all holy gracious like giving spirit, now and ever, and forever.
as Abraham and be blessed as Isaac and multiply like Jacob, walking in peace and keeping the commandments of God in righteousness. And you, O bright, may you be exalted as Sarah, be happy as Rebecca, and multiply like Rachel, rejoicing in your husband, and observing the prescription of the law, for such is the will of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O God, our God, you came to Cana in Galilee and blessed the marriage there. Now bless your servants who through your providence are united in the common life of marriage. Bless the daily course of their life Fill their life with good things and accept the crowns into your kingdom, keeping them pure, blameless, and about reproach. Amen. Peace be to all. Bow your heads to the Lord. May the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The all holy, consubstantial, and life creating Trinity, one divinity and kingdom, bless you and grant you a long life with good children and advancements in life, in faith. Fill you with abundance of all good things of the earth and deem you worthy of receiving the promised blessings through the prayers of the Mother of God and all the saints. Glory be to you, O Christ, our God, our hope. Glory be to you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord. May Christ, our true God, who by his present king of Galilee showed marriage to be an honorable state, have mercy on us and save us. Through the praise of his most pure mother, of the holy glory of the Christ for the apostles, of the Holy Father, and the cause of the patron of this church, and of all the saints, for his gracious and loves mankind. Grant, O Lord, to your newly wed servants, Keith and Trees, peace, health, and happiness for many years. <laughs>